Hi all, welcome to the Cloud Magica. Today we will discuss module 3 in which we will discuss MapReduce key concepts, MapReduce job life cycle, MapReduce page, split, MapReduce example, unbalanced cluster, cluster balancing, block size in SDFS, estimate Hadoop storage, estimate the number of data nodes, Apache Hadoop ecosystem. Let us start with session 1 of module 3. MapReduce can perform simple or complex computations on large data sets. MapReduce is responsible for performing all the simple or complex computations by breaking down a large complex computations into multiple tasks and distribute those tasks to individual slave nodes and take care of coordination aggregation and consolidation of results. Map reduce key concept. Map reduce is a programming model made for processing huge amount of data in parallel by dividing the work into a set of independent tasks. MapReduce works in a master-slave fashion. In MapReduce, task tracker acts as slave and job tracker acts as master map reduce has two major phases a map phase and a reduce phase so we can say Hadoop MapReduce jobs are divided into a set of map tasks and reduce tasks that execute in a distributed fashion on a cluster of nodes. Map phase processes parts of input data using mapper's logic defined in the mapper function. The reduce phase aggregates the data using a reducer logic defined in the reducer function. MapReduce operates on key value pairs. So basically a MapReduce job takes a set of input key value pairs and produces a set of output key value pairs by passing the data through map and reduce function. The map task produces an intermediate set of key value pairs that the reduce task uses as input. 
so basically this map will produce an intermediate set of key value pair and that key value pair will be used by reduce function as input the key in the map output pair need not be unique so these key value pair can be duplicate it means two or more different pairs of input can have same key a map reduce job is value has a map and a reduce age but the reduce age is not mandatory and can be omitted depending upon our requirement we can have one reducer multiple reducer or zero reducer it is good that map reduce has built in fault tolerance and can run on commodity hardware very efficiently map reduce takes the responsibility for the data distribution across various nodes assigning the tasks to each of the nodes getting the result back from each node re executing the failed task in case of any node failure the input data format must be application specific and is specified by the user the output is in the form of key value pairs in the simplest form of map reduce programs the programmer can only provide just the map function or map and reduce function all other functionalities including the grouping of the intermediate pairs and the final sorting is provided at run time in between the map and reduce processing a shuffle phase sorts all the map output value with the same key into a single reduce input key and value list pairs where the value list is a list of all values sharing the same key thus the input to a reduce task is actually a set of key value list pairs the type of key and values at each stage determine the interfaces to your map and reduce functions we will discuss about key and value type in data type module before start coding for mapper and reducer you should must determine the data types needed at each stage in the map reduce process for example choose the map input key and value types which is best suited to represent the input data from which to derive the final result choose the result output key and value types that best represents the desired outcome then determine the necessary transformation to get from the map input to the reduce output and choose the intermediate map output key value and reduce input key value type to match so let's discuss about the life cycle of a map reduce job and the roles and 
responsibilities of the primary payer in the life cycle. Once the user submits a MapReduce job to Hadoop, the client prepares the job for submission and submit it to the job tracker. The job tracker schedules the job and distributes the map work among the task trackers for parallel processing. Each task tracker handles a single map task. The job tracker gets the progress information from the task tracker. As map results become available, the job tracker basically distributes the reduced work among the task trackers for parallel processing. Each task tracker spawns a reduced task to perform the work. The task tracker sends the progress information to job tracker. One important point to remember is that all the map tasks do not have to finish completely before reduced task start running. Reduced task can begin as soon as map tasks begin completing. Thus, the map and reduced steps can overlap. I mean to say it is not always the case in which it will overlap, but sometimes it can overlap and sometimes it will not overlap. In the context of Hadoop MapReduce, a job is the unit of work to be performed as requested by client or user. The job includes the data to be processed, means input data, MapReduce, program, algorithm and other relevant configuration information that is mandatory to execute the job. When users submit a MapReduce job to Hadoop, then job client prepares a job for execution and also validates the required job configuration, generate the input splits, copy the job resources like configuration, job jar files, input split to a shared location. Shared location means from where job resources can be accessed to the job tracker and task trackers for example SDFS directory and submits the job to the job tracker. Let's discuss job tracker. Job tracker basically keeps track of the individual task or job assigned to each and every nodes and coordinates the exchange of information and results. In Hadoop, each worker or slave contains the two components that is task tracker and a data node. In Hadoop world, SDF is used for storage and MapReduce used for computation. Just like the HDFS, the MapReduce also works in a master-slave or master-worker fashion. In MapReduce, a job tracker node acts as a master and takes the responsibility for task scheduling or executing on appropriate nodes, coordinating the execution of tasks sending the information for the execution of task, getting the result back after the execution of each task, 
re-executing the failed task and monitoring, maintaining the overall progress of the job. We know a job consists of multiple tasks. A job progress depends on the status of progress of tasks associated with it. If you are using Hadoop 1.x, then similar to name node, there is only one job tracker node per Hadoop. So when preparing to run a job, the job tracker one fetches the input splits from the HDFS said location where the job client basically placed the resource create a map task for each split then assign each map task to a task tracker. The job tracker monitors the health of the task tracker and also keep the track of the progress of the job. As map tasks complete and results become available, the job tracker creates reduce tasks up to the maximum enabled by the job configuration. Then assign each map result partition to a reduce task. Assigns each reduce task to a task tracker. A job is complete when all map and reduce task successfully complete. If there is a situation where reducer is not required and if all map tasks successfully completed, then job will be considered as complete. Task tracker is basically responsible for running the task assigned to it. In Hadoop, a task tracker node acts as a slave or worker as is solely responsible for executing a task assigned to it by the job tracker. Logically, there is no restriction on the number of task tracker nodes that can exist in a Hadoop cluster, but you are using Hadoop 1.x and if you install more than 4000 nodes in your cluster, then some random behavior is expected. But if you are using 2.x, then you can go beyond 10,000 nodes. Task Tracker receives the mandatory information for execution of a task from Job Tracker and then executes the task and also sends the result back to the Job Tracker. Task Tracker manages the tasks of one slave node 
and reports status to the job tracker. When the job tracker assigns a map or reduced task to a task tracker, then basically a task tracker is responsible for fetches job resource locally, spawns a child JVM on the worker node to execute the map or reduce task, report status to the job tracker. Hadoop map reduce divides the job into multiple sub jobs which is known as a task. These tasks can run independently on various nodes across the cluster. So these are the basically map reduce different phases. In map phase, the input data is divided into input splits. By default, the map reduce framework gets input from the Hadoop distributed file system. So here will be HDFS. Map task in map reduce is performed using a mapper function. MapReduce takes the responsibility to process one or more chunks of data and producing the output result. Each task works on smaller subset of the data so that the load is spread across the cluster. The map task load parse transform and then filter the data reducer task copy the intermediate data from mapper task in order to group and aggregate the data and each reduced task is responsible for handling a subset of map task output. It is really incredible that a wide range of problem can be solved with such a straightforward paradigm. The reduce phase takes the output from map task as input. Then reduce task basically consolidates the data into final output. Of course, there are multiple intermediate states are involved. By default, the map reduce framework stores result in HDFS. Each map task in Hadoop is broken into the phases like record reader, mapper, combiner, and partitioner. We know that the reduce phase depends on output from the map phase, but still, Map and reduce processing is not need to be sequential. I would like to say that reduce tasks can begin as soon as map finishes the execution. And I already told you it is not mandatory that for all map tasks has to complete before any reduce task can begin. The reduce tasks are broken into the Shuffle phase, sort phase, reduce phase, and output format. Hadoop runs the task efficiently on the nodes in which the data rests. In this case, the data typically does not have to travel over the network and can be executed and computed on the local machine. 